Welcome to Indianapolis Motor Speedway here today for the Asphalt Outlaws Racing League. Uh, Austin awesome has not invited me to the Discord yet, so I cannot really see anything. It is also an incredibly quiet track, unless that's my headset. No, it's just uh, that quiet here. There we go. It's a little bit louder. But they have just gotten done with their qualifying, so I'll pull up the starting order here. Uh, let me change my RAC timing. I forgot I am on a local connection now so let me refresh that very quickly again sorry my bad i'm using austin's um file so i'm going to change some stuff around with it should pop up here in a minute there we go uh, I don't know why those, that's where the logos are not wanting to show us. But first is Evan Schilling, third, Colton Hardy, or second, Colton Hardy, third, Kevin Winker, fourth, Clinton would be fifth, Michael Newman, sixth, Nicholas Lawrence, seventh, Jay Stinson, eighth, Brody Bent, ninth, Jesse Calloway, tenth, Joe Yakes, eleventh, Dennis Steele, twelfth, Zach Smallwood, thirteenth, Bill Hayes, Hales, fourteenth, John Siliono, John, oh, I said that wrong, fifteenth, Mark Beverly, sixteenth, Ask Beverly, 17th, Jesse Wise, 18th, Jonathan Herbert, 19th, Rick LePage, 20th, Dylan Poss, 21st, Robert Dudley, 22nd, Keith Prince, 23rd, Tyler Beverly, and 23rd is Andrew Hainsley. So I'll make sure, do we have at least some of these logos? We do not, wow, okay, that's great. Let me fix these logos here very quickly again. I have no idea why none of them are showing on this and I know the file that he sent me works evidently it's showing on this one but it is a 90 lap race here today so it'll be interesting uh, these trucks again they like downforce a lot it's kind of not my type of racing I don't enjoy that style wholeheartedly um, but some people eat, eat that up me personally no but um if you're gonna make a pass at this track you better better get it done because if you don't you are in for a world of hurt uh you are going to get ran around it is not going to be fun at all to deal with they're just gonna basically eat you up every everywhere I and mean, it's not gonna basically not gonna end at all Still changing some of these logos here. Hopefully that one shows up. There we go. So that shows up there. I'll put these sponsor logos up in the top corner here in a minute. But Pace Car is getting ready to pull off. Evan Schilling will lead them to green as the green flag is in the air. We are underway here. off with come off before there with Evan Schilling in the league I'm going to fix the logos here so be quiet for just a little bit before I plug all these in Everybody's already turned basically into a big train going down the back stretch. Um, that's going to be super common. And you can't really pass at this track. But if you do and you don't get it done, you're going back at least two positions 
if you're lucky, if there is nobody behind you, there's going to be a little bit less. But however, you're going to go back some. There's no way you're not going to go back any. See, Winker, he looks to the inside of Clinby. I believe that's who that was right there at the moment. done but chilling mean, he's gonna go to the or he's gonna go back to second here maybe it depends so this is what happens when you don't get a pass done is you get stuck side by side together I think Schilling's gonna be he's gonna be able to hold off would be there for that position pulls ahead of him just a tad drop down two positions As pass has crashed. I uh, don't know what happened to him. That's a little odd to see there. See Winker, he's trying to fight for position. He's trying to get the side draft and also pull up. And he just shoots the gap up in front of Nicholas Lawrence. Doesn't really shut the door, but he definitely said, Hey, I'm going to take this position. You kind of have to be a little... A little rude getting in there, I'd say, almost. I mean, well, he, I saw way more aggressive getting in there, but he was actually, i say, pretty, pretty calmly getting in there behind someone. You do kind of have to shoot the gap a little bit when you're trying to get in there behind him. Uh, I need to get a... I just realized Austin put the Discord invite in. Oh my gosh, she didn't have that in there. Let me see if I can get this invite here in a minute. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to get into this Discord if I can find him. As we got three Winkers putting it three wide back there. Making a move. He's actually going back. So he's really just honestly trying to minimize his risk at this point. He really doesn't want to lose any more positions and I, I don't blame him either as ooh, that's a hard hit for Hardy Hardy goes into the wall he's gonna have the 63 no 63 gonna go around him he finally is able to clear him he's gotta make up all that momentum that's again the trucks are, are lower horsepower than the um, cup and Xfinity cars that once once they get going they get going but it's basically flat out through almost the whole entire race there. Schilling going to continue to lead. Would be second. Biggest mover right now is Jesse Callaway. He is currently up basis he is or how many places he up he is up five biggest movers so far second biggest Tyler Beverly he is currently up four positions right now Schilling started on pole he's sitting on the pole I'm not sure what their fuel is like this race I didn't check that before I got in here I, I don't know I expect it to be around 20 ish maybe as we got would be looking for the lead he's gonna duck out and like Lawrence is trying to go with him too Lawrence thought about it and Schilling's gonna go up the track would be stays close with him oh we got the that's Lawrence just I think he bounced off the wall he's able to save it goes through the grass see what happened to Lawrence I think Lawrence yeah he got tight behind Schilling and Hit the wall, went down to the inside. He does a pretty good job, though. I mean, that's definitely damaged that truck pretty badly, however. Let's see if Winker, who struggled a little bit early on, he's found his way back up to third place at the moment currently. A little bit further back. This is Yakes on the bottom 
of Stenson. I remember Stenson from a league, and you see Poss. He is back on the track at the moment, so he's doing a good job. Stenson going three wide with him. He's going to come up and nudge him just a tad. Stenson, he's got Smallwood's his outside. and Smallwood's able to get away from all that stuff that's going on there. They were three wide there for a little bit. Yakes is still trying to work on Stenson. One of the most annoying and Stenson goes around. And caution out. Minimal caution. Con or actually almost, I don't honestly say no damage done to that truck. Oh, that's net code 100%. Yeah, Yakes didn't even touch Stinson in it. Turned him, so there's nothing that Yakes did wrong there at that moment. He completely not in the wrong. Uh, hold on. Trying to get somebody's. I'm trying to get their Discord here for a second, so it's my my bad about that. I'm trying to get in. Austin didn't message me back with that at all, so that's interesting for them. Pretty nice. But I don't think uh, they gotta wait to come back down pit road. I don't know if we'll have somebody come down. They we may have someone come down. It'll be a little bit iffy. If if someone does, but it's a possibility. We'll just have to see how much tire wear has happened. But what the fall off was, they were, I can't tell if they were running last slaps. Who will come down pit road? Their question that I have. Will we see nobody come down pit way. Boss crash again on lap. This is lap six. Here I'm looking at something. This is lap six for him. That's for guys. Four, four laps down. Wait, no, this is what happened. I don't know. Hey, they're pitting right now. I have no idea what that was about. Chilling and still stay out. Everybody else comes down pit road though. I put these guys at a disadvantage a little bit. Stayed out. I don't think their disadvantage will be massive. However, I think it will be a pretty small one. You can, you just, just stay in front of somebody, you can already mess with them. And I pulled them behind you. Let's see, no one has their disc. That sucks. I don't know where it is. Yeah, I don't know what. Look, I have no idea what happened between that. That was just weird. I don't understand, like. I mean, that was... I don't think it was before the race, though. It couldn't have been. But it said... I mean, it said lap six, but... I I don't know. I really don't know at this moment. It looks like he got turned. At the same time, he also literally just cut across his nose. So I don't know what else he's expecting at that moment. Just, that's just... A, it's a weird situation there. A really weird situation. Leave lights should go off on the pace car. 
this time by, though. So, see if they do. Something about this track is so big. Yeah, lights will go off there. So that's a good thing to see. So they were running 52 highs, 53 lows. So if... What type of see if their drop-off is? I don't know if their drop-off is going to be too much. I think if you stay in the draft, you won't be hurt as bad. If you stay in the draft, that is. Now if you... Yeah, and of course, if you get hung out and try to get back in the draft and you can't get back up, that'll be a challenge for you to get back in line. If you mess, uh, mess a corner up, you're going to be hurting the whole back stretch. So I will also see some more blocking happen too because people know that if they do get loose, they'll have to uh, kind of block so they don't get just ran by. As pace car will pull in here, starter will have the flag in his hand. And the green flag is in the air. We are back underway here. We got them three wide up here. We did for a moment. Somebody put it three wide, and I think they decided that's maybe not worth it. As you see, Steele, who's wait, yeah, he hasn't pit. Oh yeah, Shillings way back there. Wait, there was something that happened. I missed that. There was something that happened on one of these corners. There was an incident. No, that's... No, I was looking at somebody else. Something happened. I don't know how he's all the way back there. Or I was panning through on the start. Somebody must have... Just, he's, there's no way he's that far off pace. There's just no way. They're, they're still getting up to pace. So I'm not going to count this lap as a lap. It's interesting. So how far off are those tires really? And if you just get a bad start, I mean, that's... And when you lose that many positions on the start, that's, I think, more than a position issue. I mean, those tires have to be just absolutely cooked to do that. There's no way that would happen. No, I mean, you ran a. No, he's also out of the draft too. See, that's that's the hard thing with this track is I can't tell. If it's just so draft needy, or if those tires have actually fallen off the way that they have. I don't think that they've fallen off the way like the way that they have. This just doesn't seem normal for it to happen. Again, I could be completely wrong though, and tires actually do fall off like that. I don't put really know as we have steel trying to hold off this position from would be would be, it looks like he'll easily get that, though, Steel really 
can't hold a candle to him at all. See, Yake's getting up under him now. He's trying to get up, trying to get up under him. He's having to deal with Callaway on his outside. Can't get to him. Actually, he does get clear of him pretty easily in that turn there. Winker, he was up here earlier. Beverly's actually, he's up 10 positions. So is Tyler Beverly. So we got Mark Beverly and Tyler Beverly up 10 positions. Both doing a really good job right now. As ooh, Winker gets a little bit loose there, shoots down the track, he's going to be able to save that and keep it going straight. But that was a little bit of an antsy moment for him. I know he's probably maybe shaking a little bit. He's like, oh gosh, I about just junked this car. No, that's how I think sometimes I'm like, I am so lucky I did not just absolutely trash this vehicle. I know old rally driver quote was, if you're not scared of wrecking, you're not going fast enough. Steel surprisingly held on decently well, considering his tires that he has. He doesn't have super fresh tires, as we got Yakes trying to get up under Woodby. Woodby, I think, tried to throw a little bit of a block. I mean, just a little bit of one. He didn't, like, you know, run him down the track completely. He definitely wasn't letting him by easily. And he does that, but he gets in the wall there, so it's going to give Yakes a run down the back, or down the front stretch. He's going to look to the inside of him now. Dive on in there. You see Beverly also looking around all this stuff. He's like, you know, something might be happening here. Let's kind of let them let them deal with each other at the moment. That's a Valvoline paint scheme. I know that because I had somebody make that paint scheme. Just changed up the sponsors as they are three wide. This is back towards tent. This is for I believe like eleventh position. And there, I know Winker's back here because he got a little bit loose. Was able to save the truck though. Keep on wanting to say car because I'm so used to being cars out on this track now, not the uh, something else. Yikes is all over. Would be, he's just not going to let him go at all. He's trying to, oh, he's trying to get him there. He's, oh, he, if he wouldn't have nicked him there, I think he would have been able to get a run. He's so close. He's just not close enough, and that's a, he is throwing blocks now. I would almost tell Yakes this. You can actually cross there. I think he did it. No, he's almost there. You can actually cross somebody over really easily when they start moving like that. It's just lay off on entry and then just flat foot it in the corner and get that big run. Because yeah, that's the only way you're gonna be able to pass is he would be yeah he's blocking hard. Yates is Yates is trying to find a way around him. I think he's drawn side by side with him, and he has finally. Would be was blocking basically every lane he could. Not dirty blocking though, just blocking it. There's a difference. There's dirty blocks, and then there's just a hey, I'm just gonna block this lane because I don't really want you taking this from me. That's what some people struggle to realize sometimes. Is, they're not able to tell the difference with the lanes that happen. Bakes is still trying to look for where he's completely sideways to that corner. Oh, Lord, he's going to be loose down the front stretch, so he's going to lose probably both of these positions. Uh, would be Okay, Woodby's trying to bring him and Beverly side by side with each other. So he's going to be working both lanes to keep these two racing. Hopefully burn up their tires is what he's hoping that it does. As Yakes is going to smoothly slide in there in position. That's a good move by him. He sees the hole and he's like, no, I'm just going to... I'm just going to slowly just slip my car in here. I don't need to be too aggressive or is anything right now as I let the camera choose where we go. It looks like it's looking at Colton Hardy. 
at the moment. Currently riding in tenth position as we just have just had Jesse Wise pass John Scully. I don't even want to say that last name. That name's hard. Still, I'm trying to pronounce his name. I don't even know how to say that. That's a really difficult last name. We got Smallwood. He's kind of stuck behind Yakes. They've let would be get away and I wouldn't be surprised if we see these guys maybe kind of get a little bit angry at each other like you know I'm just kind of done with this I'm just move out the way please part of it want it out and done as yet Yakes is getting tight back there as I can see him kind of run run uh, Beverly at the track he's not trying to do that he's just plowing tight and the car is basically not turning anymore he's just holding that wheel really Really aggressively. Only thing you can really do is lift out of the throttle and maybe get on the brakes a little bit. And, the, and these cars, a lot of people think, oh, just get on the brakes. Well, you don't want to slam on the brakes by any means. If, if you do that, you're going around, or you're going to go right up into the truck uh, around you because they, they get really tight. They can't turn anymore. It's just not easy at all. guys just looking back there right now everybody's just one big line i still don't know what happened with lepage and pass that was just weird i don't understand what went on there i don't think he clipped the grass he had to have gotten on the brakes for something and he had to have really aggressive rear brake bias because that's the only reason he would go around like that you're not just going to go around and loop it for no no reason at all that's just not common Beverly's trying to run would be down. He's kind of getting a push from Smallwood. The only thing you can really do is just get pushes up there towards the, the player that you're going for. Shillings times. I don't have an accurate time for what the tires are with him because he's not in the draft of anybody, so I don't really know how the fall off is. And it looks like it's expected fall off, like it's kind of around that range. Of, no, no, you might, you all might know what I mean by that. I mean, the tires are never going to be the same the whole entire race, unless you're in the next gen, and they are for some stupid reason because they can't find out a good short track package at all here's one take out the big rims or big wheels give them smaller tires and less of a area for traction that's how you make the racing interesting because nobody is able to pass in that car and that's what sucks with it small what he's gonna look to the inside of Beverly here you make a run in these trucks you have to get just one big run and he's not gonna be able to do it it looks like oh, that's actually a surprise Yakes is gonna go with him and shove him down the back stretch so he's gonna keep him there I think they may be realizing that they got to shove to get up to Woodby as Woodby's out of their drafting range so he doesn't have to worry about anything at this moment he can just keep on going and he was one of the cars that pit, so he doesn't have to be too worried about fuel. He's going to be burning more fuel as Shillings just left pit road. I was going to say he needed to pit. I believe he's going to be, I think, no, not a lap down yet. 
He will go one lap down here, though, eventually. You can see there's a leader coming by. I think he may be able to get lucky. Yeah, he'll be the lucky dog. Oh, he's, oh if he merges in front of him, he's not going to hop up in front of him. No, Schilling has some damage, too. It's on the right rear. Yakes is trying to get around to Yakes. Uh, Beverly and Smallwood still trying to get around each other. Chilling could play a factor here if he decides to. He really. I don't know. When I say factor, I'm saying I'm thinking more draft related than anything else. I don't think he can do much besides that. Hmm. So Schilling, this is where he comes into a factory. He's going to not hold up Smallwood. He's just I mean, stuck. He's kind of stuck there. He's going to stay around him and do a good job. Probably going to get out of the way here soon. His yakes is going to get tight. A little bit. Have to maybe bail out a tad. However, with this happening, this is just allowed. Um, would be to just scoot away really, really easily at this moment. He's almost out to a two-second lead. If he catches any more guys around him, then he may uh, be able to pull away even more with, with getting some draft help. See, well, yeah, he's going to be running into some trucks here, so he'll pull away even more as he catches the draft. But these guys are also catching him, though. I don't know if that's because they've got a draft partner. I mean, it has to be because they've got a draft partner because they just cut off a lot of time. As the caution is out, I believe that's probably the stage. Yeah, I don't see anybody around. So it would be he'll win that stage, stage one, really easily. Basically not not even a challenge for him at that at that point. He'll come down pit road. Everybody's in the pit down here, get four tires and fuel. You just want to kind of stay with everybody else. catch the pace part. That's the only thing about this track is you have to wait. You have to go so far around to catch the pace car. It's, it feels like it's ridiculous at, the, at this track. <laughs> so it would be Smallwood, Yakes, Beverly, and Vince. I think, it's, I think that's how you say it, Bent. I'm not completely sure. It might be how you say his last name. Shilling. Now, Shilling, he'll get the lucky dog here. I don't know if you go back and pit if you're him or not after this. I don't, I don't, I don't think you should. I don't think it's worth it. 
Everybody's going to come down here, like I said. 31 laps of a 90 lap race here, Indy. Each lap is about, we'll basically say a minute because it's eight, eight seconds short of a minute. See if Woodby can win that race. Oh, Yakes has missed his pit stall entry. That is not good at all. I think it's under caution, though, so it's not going to hurt him too bad. As somebody just missed there is super hard. Yeah, Woodby is in, in a way, from his pit stop, so he's good. Go win that race off pit road. Winker, actually, no, he won race. He did pit at lap 26, though. Him and Newman lap 26, but would be wins that race off pit road. But now that these guys are under caution, we will go to a commercial break here. Fred Mott Racing Enterprises, located in Daytona Beach, Florida. Fred Mott Racing Enterprises and Performance is a family owned and operated automotive performance business. You can find FMR Performance at almost all of the large motorsport swap meets and rod shows throughout the country. Visit our eBay store for all your automotive performance needs. We ship your orders daily. Hello there, Bandit Racing Week fans. Former broadcaster Marshall Crocker Jr. here, part-time driver of the number 78 for 785 Racing. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Geezer Authentics, your place for all things Bandit Racing League merchandise. Well, now let's say you want to go and buy a t-shirt for your reigning, defending Bandit Racing League champion, Eddie Haggy. You put it in black, you get it in an extra large, and you add it to your cart there for a reasonable price. You're going to move on, maybe look at some, you know, shirts and sweaters, but maybe there's nothing that catches your eye this time, so you're going to move on to some wall wear. And you know me, I, I can't lie, I was a big Cody Welch fan back in my time broadcasting, so maybe you want to grab a 785 Cody Welch pennant to hang on your wall above your sim racing rink. You add it to your cart, and you're going to move on. Maybe you're thinking some sort of accessory, you know, maybe you're a big hat person like I am, you need something to wrap right on the brim, and... There you go, Bandit Racing League hats in a variety of colors, but I personally like the combo of the camo. About to cut that one a little bit short here, but Pace Car is in 33 laps of 90 done at the moment as the green flag is in the air. We are back underway here.
getting on board here with some drivers. Winkert has made his way back up front. His strategy, though, is he stayed out. Uh, his friend, who also stayed out with him, he's already back to sixth place currently. Riding in. Riding in six, and that six in the 12 car. Uh, hello, Gus. Hello there. Five laps of 90 done as we got 69 of Wise. And he might have had a little bit of contact there with Tyler Beverly as he bails out of the throttle. Yakes is going to put him three wide now. But hey, I'm down here, bud. I'm going to make it a little bit hard for you as I think Wise saw that and he was like, you know, is this really worth it? For me, it is worth it. Go three wide. Oh, never mind. We got somebody turned. That is uh, Yakes into the 88 and the 28 gets involved uh 88 came down into yikes there I and mean, that's not on yikes that was herbert and then steel was innocent bystander cannot put that on yikes there if i'm rc i'm saying hey that is not yikes fault that car that just slowly drifted down into him. Slower and slower and slower. <laughs> Should take him to, I believe, lap 40 on... Yeah, lap 40. Herbert's down, evidently. Destroyed. Literally destroyed. Uh, that car might not be able to do much after that truck. Keep on saying car. I'm so used to the trucks, it's not even funny. I say truck, I say car for everything because I'm so used to driving those. Even in real life, I don't really drive a truck. Or these are not like stock trucks at all, so... If you're an old NASCAR fan, you're like, oh, they don't run, they don't run stock cars anymore. I don't like this old generation. Yeah, I get it. Real life news, there's already been like three cautions in the truck race. So we do, do have some takers. Mark Beverly, Bill Hells, John, Jesse Callaway, Lawrence, Yakes, Dennis, Schilling, Page, and Herbert. Herbert's, yeah, he's already down. I forgot he was involved in that main wreck that happened. But if these guys are under a, another quick caution, we will go to a commercial break here again. LAT Racing Oils is invested in winning. With industry-leading at-track support, superior engineering, blending technology, and the world championships to prove it, LAT is your premier choice for racing lubricants. Used by NHRA Pro Mod champions Jose Gonzalez and Chris Thorne, along with their closest competitors, LAT Racing Oil continues to carry top-level racers to the winner's circle in all categories of competition. From engine oil to transmission fluid and gear oil, LAT has you covered from end to end in your race car. A nationwide dealer network needs easy access to our products as well. Visit latracingoils.com for more. Hello there, Bandit Racing Week fans. Former broadcaster Marshall Crocker Jr. here, part-time driver of the number 78 for 785 Racing. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Geezer Authentics, your place for all things Bandit Racing League merchandise. Well, now let's say you want to go and buy a t-shirt for your reigning, defending Bandit Racing League champion, Eddie Haggy. 
You put it in black, you get it in an extra large, and you add it to your cart there for a reasonable price. You're gonna move on, maybe look at some, you know, shirts and sweaters, but maybe there's nothing that catches your eye this time, so you're gonna move on to some wall wear. And you know me, I, I can't lie, I was a big Cody Welch fan back in my time broadcasting, so maybe you want to grab a 785 Cody Welch pennant to hang on your wall above your sim racing rink. You add it to your cart and you're going to move on, maybe you're thinking some sort of accessory, you know, maybe you're a big hat person like I am, you need something to wrap right on the brim, and there you go, Bandit Racing League hats in a variety of colors, but I personally like the combo of the camo and that full send racing network orange. And you're going to move on now to some drinkware. You need something to drink your coffee out of in the morning. Why not grab a 785 racing mug and support yours truly, Marshall Crocker Jr. This has been Geezer Authentics. Check out the site. Lots of great options for Bandit Racing League fans. Pace car is getting ready to pull off here. 39 laps of 90 done. It will be 40 here soon, getting close to halfway. At 45 is halfway. Roughly 50-ish minutes left in the race if they go green the whole way. But Pace car pulls in here. Starter will have the flag in his hand. As the green flag is back in the air, we are back under away here. Winker is going to maintain the lead here. A little bit older tires than the cars, or the cars, trucks behind him. Keep need to reiterate that. Trucks behind him, these are not cars. As Stinson's going to look to the outside of him, a little bit tight, or a little bit loose there. Almost came down into him, Bristol. Uh, it's running line into Bristol. I have driv driven by that building many times. I've actually met Jay in person. Big shove here soon in a minute. See how hard Winker fights him though. Winker's gonna not really give him a ton of room, but he doesn't have to. He's actually got a little bit of damage on that. He's got a little bit of damage on that left side of the truck too. I can see the fenders beat in just a tad on that 42 machine. Wise looking to the inside. Tyler Beverly there. Trying to get that position from him, and he's gonna almost make a little, almost a little bit of contact. Luckily, he was able to stay off of him. So, uh, Wise is gonna get a shove down here from Lawrence. Stinson's scooting away a little bit. I think they're getting a little bit held up getting around Winker. 
just because Winker has those older tires on the car, it's not going to be so easy for him to uh, really hold off anybody. I mean, when you have older tires like that, it's kind of the only thing you can do is just try to hold off people. I said, I said try. Keyword, try. Doesn't work too well most of the time is what I found out. Unless it's a road course, and you can maybe get away with it. See, Woodby's coming back with a little bit of vengeance here. He's trying to get, face Stinson down. He's just got that draft. And again, with tracks like this and the way these trucks are, with these low horsepower, high downforce, is it's so hard to get away from someone. But but once you do, you're pretty much away from them for the foreseeable future. To a certain point, as we'll look back here a little bit. This is wise again, as we got almost three wide back here. I think that's Lawrence. Found his way in. Schilling's also back there at the moment. Uh, uh, that was Hales who shot that wide. Steele's looking to the inside of Callaway, rocking that liquid death. Paint scheme liquid death, if you don't know, it's just water, sometimes flavored. Looks like a beer can, it's not a beer can. It is strictly water. He's Stinson, he's got a, he's pulling a train with him. He's gotten I believe this is basically the top, yeah, top six are all behind him at the moment. And he won't really be able to pull away from him at all. So a little bit later, maybe. I'd say a little bit later, he'll probably have to wait till he hit a lap 31, lap 52 to 53, if he can just edge his way out there. Just slowly scoot out to a lead is what you can only do with these vehicles. Now, however, if he, if he does bobble once, then uh, he's in for it. He is going to get just eaten up immediately. Let's see his lead be yeah, cut down here, down the back stretch. His lead will extend in the corners, and it will shrink during the back stretch and front stretch. I don't know. Is there a way Indy shaped... How is Indianapolis shaped? I'm actually going to look this up now. Uh, how is this track shaped? I was going to say, it's got four corners, but it's kind of weird. I was going to say, it's not a normal track at all. I always knew that track had a little bit of a weird shape. There's really... They've got turns. Yeah, it's not a typical oval. I knew it wasn't. I can not remember my time driving this track. This track was introduced in 1994, I want to say. Uh, 19, what was it? Uh... Yeah, 1994, because that was Jeff Gordon won the very first race, or he also won his first race ever at the Coke 600, Charlotte's longest race in NASCAR. I think he got that because of a gutsy pit call. He decided to take two tires on the car. He sat on the pole, however. Good old Wonder Boy. I believe this year they're also racing back at this track. Uh, they ran the road course here. I don't, I don't like road courses, but I think you got to keep Indy on the schedule. Cut like, let's say, cut some of the super speedways. I can't stand them. Um, Atlanta's iffy. I don't know about Atlanta. As we have a caution is out here. As I think it was Beverly. Yeah, Beverly said he entered pit lane, so he might have looped it. 
possibly I don't see any. no it is Lawrence didn't give me a notification for that either he gets turned by the 53 there that's just a close racing hard into the inside wall spins around tail what uh, tail whips it he gets back rolling I believe that's the second he wreck he's been involved in I don't think he's been the caught not the cause of it but he's been involved in sometimes that's just a hard thing to deal with. Hmm. So Jay will bring these guys back around here and they'll all probably come down pit road. Have to wait for the pace car to... They have to go catch the pace car. Pace car's probably in middle of three and four at the moment, if I had to guess. Place I can think it could be is in the middle of three and four. On the back stretch right now. Let's see, this is me four tires and fuel and I don't know what their fuel run is exactly with these cars. That's the only issue that I have is I don't know what it is. What is their fuel load? I can guess it off of that. 92. Nine, that's a weird number. 92% fuel. I think this should get them to the end, though. Should. I have a fuel calculator with me right now, though, or, on, or a program running that will calculate fuel for me. I may, well, I can't pull up my crew chief. Crew chief would not tell me that. I also don't have my wheel up here. I don't, this is not my iRacing rig. This is just like, this is a serious gaming rig that I use. My iRacing rig is downstairs in our basement. I kind of wish I put it up in my room, but at the same time, I know dang well I don't have space for it in here. Which kind of sucks. At the same time, it does. Uh, wait a minute. No, I do not, do not have room. Yeah. Bad times. The Shillings guy, he's been gotten beat up his whole entire race. He, I, if I'm him, honestly, fix this damage that you have. As Stinson will win that race off the pit road. Four tires and fuel. He actually had a slower stop overall, but... He had less time on pit road, so he got it. He got in his box decently. I think he just had a little bit more fuel that he had to put in because he was leading. I want to say, and let's get it, Clinton. Lawrence and Tyler Beverly right now. Uh, yeah, nobody didn't take fuel tires on that pit stop. They averaged, I'd say, probably 14.6s, 14.7s, somewhere around that. We got some really high outliers with those. I believe lights should go off in the pace car. This time by real life, they are at lap 48 of 167. At the Texas race. I've been periodically checking on that on my phone every now and then. So I'm just... Sorry, that's the AC that kicks on. I just bought an air conditioning unit. Hopefully that cannot be heard. Let me check really quick. Uh, 
Okay, it cannot good. Just making sure. I'm tired of it feeling like Satan's paradise in, uh, up here. I, t I couldn't deal with it anymore. Parents said it's not hot. And I was like, well, of course it's not hot because you live, uh, you sleep on the middle part of our house. I, we, I sleep upstairs. Of course it's going to be colder down there because hot air rises. Lawrence and Beverly, I think, are done. Herbert, Hainsley, Poss are done. Heath Prince is evidently RC because he has not even touched the track once this race. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Camera changes with that. That's pace truck or pace truck. Pace car will pull in here a little bit past halfway at the moment. Lap 51 of 90 coming to lap 52. Starter will have the flag in his hand. And the green flag is back in the air. We are back underway here. See a little bit of a nick there. I think that was round wise. That may have been Bill Hales that got into the wall just a tad. Just just barely didn't smoke it, so he's going to be fine. And I said, he, I think he got into it. The um, reason I say that is because sometimes it shows them getting into it, but they actually don't touch it. It's just what I see from that. And it's just a connection issue. With iRacing and me, it's like, hey, he didn't hit the wall. But my internet's like, no, he did. Everybody's view looks different on that because of it. <clears throat> Smallwood, he's got the lead right now in front of Stinson. Stinson's probably going to try to mount a run here, try to get a little bit of an outside roll from the car there, and I think he's going to get a pretty decent one too. He's going to decide to go up under him. Go, go behind him, sorry. Lift him up, pretty much. And not turn him, luckily. Don't want to see anybody get turned and smoked an outside wall. Or inside a wall, for that, for that matter. But Winker just ran the fastest lap of the race, 52-27. That's fastest by... Or, sorry, 52-57. I thought it was 27-57. That's not much faster than... That's, a hundredth faster than would be ran. You can see the draft effect. So people that are in the draft up here, 52, 63 is back here. So he doesn't have it. LePage, who doesn't have it, 53, 70, almost a second slower each lap. Smallwood right now, he's trying to break up the draft that's going around here at the moment. That's why you see him going all the way to the bottom. He's trying to stop him from leeching air off of him. And that's a really difficult thing to do is because you're messing up your line at the same time and you really have to get back in line before you enter the corner because of that. If you don't, it's going to be a be an issue. Go Winker. I type Winker Nation. Yeah, we've got a lot of Winker. I know Kevin Winker is a pretty popular driver whenever he races in Truck Series. I think that's all he really races in is Truck Series, too. Stuff as you have Schilling, who's slowly making his way back up here. He got into the wall just a tad. Cars always look so weird with that. The trucks always look so weird with that small tire on them. I'm just, I'm not used to that. 
but these tires actually fall off unlike the next gen's tires. See, Smallwood's gonna keep doing this. He's gonna keep doing this pretty much until he gets a big enough lead. But the issue is, is um, Smallwood or Sensen has Winker that can shove him. Not really staying in touch with Smallwood at all, and everybody else is basically on side by side. Let's see, I was wise having to deal with somebody. Steel, no, that is who is that? Okay. Newman kind of getting a little bit nervous, seeing him kind of swipe the bottom a little bit. So he, he realized he's like, I'm just gonna try to get away. That's just a reaction. I had that happen a couple of times because you don't really know if the driver's going to overcorrect or if they're not going to overcorrect. So you you go ahead and you give them that air room. A lot of the times they kind of do use up all that room that you give them and then they take you out with you or with them. And then you're mad for the rest of the race. Ask me how I know. What's happened to me? It's not fun at all. All right. Smallwood's gap has pretty much stayed the same. They're not in drought. Now they're in drafting range of them. Six tenths is what I've noticed with basically all vehicles. Uh, that's the the time or that's the space that you need to be able to get a draft. Every keeps stretching it out. And then it shrinks back. He's just got a big gap right there. He's picked up about two tenths. I think Weaker might have gotten a little bit loose coming down. Going to three and four there. Get a big chunk of it back though on small wood. Get almost two tenths. Small wood may have just sent it in that corner. But we're gonna do five laps on board here when small wood gets back with a random driver. I like to do that. Do a lap, then we'll switch. I go gyro camp. I don't say anything, it gives my voice a chance to rest because it's really worn out. Smallwood's lead. I mean, if it keeps going like this, I think Smallwood has a legit shot at just slowly scooting away from these guys up here at the moment. Well, we will start that on board right now here.
see a little bit of a battle breaking out here. This is around, uh, say, what is this around? So many cars in this, so the 22 is leading us. So this is around 11th position currently, as the ball caught them. Smallwood, however, has been caught now by Stinson as the run has gone on. Smallwood may have been pushing that truck really hard to try to get away, and he just couldn't get away from him. And that's managed to, or that's drawn people back into him. That's not a, uncommon to see either. Let's see, what in the world is that? I'm going to refresh this here. That is messed up completely. Wow, I don't know what is going on with this here. I am so sorry about that. This, this is not normal. The timing has decided to freak out on itself. We'll go with this timing instead for the racing. That is completely my fault. I have no idea what is going on with that at all. Um, I would pull up the other one, but that is... Yeah, I don't know what is going on with that. Don't want to close it because that'll mess up everything else. We're just gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to go with this one for the time being. That is, I don't want to go with it, but that's the best option that I have with that one being so messed up. See, Smallwood, he's just gonna, he's just trying to stay in it's kind of a gap right now. I don't know if they can catch him, just because. I mean, Winker has to get to Stinson and shove him more than anything else. He cannot be, um, he cannot be trying to pass him if he does get to him. As we have a caution that has come out, however, it says Haas Beverly has crashed here going into, I believe that's four there. She just gets up high. And bounces off the wall, clips the 12. And that's going to bring out the caution here. Some drivers probably didn't want to see that, but what in the world is going on with this? Oh, I know why. Hold on. Yep, that's why. It wasn't doing that earlier. But now it decides to do it. Yeah, that was odd. I don't know why it was wanting to do that now. I had some text in there that was making it so wide. We'll wait for everybody to come down pit road. Pit road should be open this time. Nobody is not going to come down pit road. That'd be a really bad decision. <clears throat> Let's see. I have to see who will win this race off of pit road. be a little bit close how close will it be as Smallwood is off and away will actually win that really easily
as now these guys have done their pit stops here we will go back or we will go to commercial break here LAT Racing Oils is invested in winning. With industry-leading at-track support, superior engineering, blending technology, and the world championships to prove it, LAT is your premier choice for racing lubricants. Used by NHRA Pro Mod champions Jose Gonzalez and Chris Thorne, along with their closest competitors, LAT Racing Oil continues to carry top-level racers to the winner's circle in all categories of competition. From engine oil to transmission fluid and gear oil, LAT has you covered from end to end in your race car. A nationwide dealer network needs easy access to our products as well. Visit latracingoils.com for more. Hello there, Bandit Racing Week fans. Former broadcaster Marshall Crocker Jr. here, part-time driver of the number 78 for 785 Racing. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Geezer Authentics, your place for all things Bandit Racing League merchandise. Well, now let's say you want to go and buy a t-shirt for your reigning, defending Bandit Racing League champion, Eddie Haggy. You put it in black, you get it in an extra large, and you add it to your cart there for a reasonable price. You're going to move on, maybe look at some, you know, shirts and sweaters, but maybe there's nothing that catches your eye this time, so you're going to move on to some wall wear. And you know me, I, I can't lie, I was a big Cody Welch fan back in my time broadcasting, so maybe you want to grab a 785 Cody Welch pennant to hang on your wall above your sim racing rink. You add it to your cart, and you're going to move on. Maybe you're thinking some sort of accessory, you know, maybe you're a big hat person like I am, you need something to wrap right on the brim, and... There you go, Bandit Racing League hats in a variety of colors, but I personally like the combo of the camo and that full send racing network orange. And you're gonna move on now to some drinkware. You need something to drink your coffee out of in the morning. Why not grab a 785 racing mug and support yours truly, Marshall Crocker Jr. This has been Geezer Authentics. Check out the site, lots of great options for Bandit Racing League fans. As we are back here. <laughs> 20 laps to go here. When they get the green flag, that's what it will be. It says 21, but it's because it's not counting the... Oh, shit. Some tracks I wish they could just, like, you know, say, hey, we're going back green immediately. My hands smell weird. Picked up a room AC, like I said earlier. Had a dog. I think it smells like the dog that they had. It smells like weed. No, it doesn't. Pace truck. Or pace car pool was in here. As the green flag is back in the air, we are back underway here. As Stinson will actually get the lead here, he's having to deal with Mark Beverly on his inside. Let's see who Smallwood will go with. Smallwood will actually go with the inside truck. That's surprising. And he goes back to the outside. Stinson might have lost the lead there. Excuse me. He hasn't. Let me hang stuff on the outside. Probably foot to the floor right there at the moment, if I had to guess. With gyro cam. See what it sounds like when he goes in the corners. He's probably going to be foot down. He never comes completely off the throttle. I could still hear him just resting on it. So one thing that I struggle with these cars is I always want to rest my foot. I want to come out of the throttle completely because I'm used to the higher horsepower next gens that they had before.
See Stinson. Just gonna try to hold off small wood. Probably these guys get single file so fast. It's there's nothing much that they can do once it happens. It's, you, you have to have a huge run. You have to hope that somebody makes a mistake or somebody checks up or something like that happens. We even really have honestly a shot at trying to make a pass on them. Stinson's see if he decides to make a lot of moves to try to block or if he doesn't block. And we saw that earlier from, uh, I can't remember who that was, but somebody was blocking pretty aggressive. What was this? Uh, I can't remember what the car number, truck number was now at the moment. As Nicholas Lawrence has entered pit lane again. See, Yakes is making his way back up here. Yakes got mired back. Not in, really in traffic. He just got mired back in some stuff that was going on. Got involved in a couple of the wrecks that weren't his doing at all. They, I mean, he didn't cause them. He just got stuck in them. And he's been working his way up from them ever since. Let's see. Yes, somebody shoots back down. It might be... Deal who just shot down to the bottom. Yeah, it looks like we're looking at... Still, oh, we got somebody around up front. That's the 49... Of Dudley. I think somebody got to next to his quarter panel and turned him. Uh, actually, he came down a little bit there. Yeah. He came down a little bit and Yakes held his line, so I'm not going to put that on Yakes. It was Dudley. Oh, he doesn't. He gets just nicked in the back. He almost had basically that whole thing avoided. At the very end, he just got nipped. It's one of the most annoying things. Think you're not going to get hit, and then at that last moment, you just get barely touched, and you're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. It's an annoying thing to deal with. However, I don't think we'll see anybody come down pit road, wait for him to catch the pace car again. See that? This car's probably in the middle of backstretch or three and four. One of those two positions. They have caught the pace car now. I don't think he ran enough laps on tires for it to matter. And do you really want to give up that track position is the question, too. I mean, is it really worth it, that track position that you just worked so hard for, giving it all up? Because if, if I'm then, I'm like, you know, I'm not giving that track position up. It's just not worth it. Turning that off. I have a remote to that. I was seeing what those settings are. I have no idea what half of those buttons do. Yeah, but nobody. Uh, Kevin Win Winker came down. Wise and Dudley all came down pit road. So it's kind of, well, Winker's a little bit surprising. I wouldn't have saw him coming down pit road. But we will go back to commercial break here. And we will come back before they go green. 
LAT Racing Oils is invested in winning. With industry-leading at-track support, superior engineering, blending technology, and the world championships to prove it, LAT is your premier choice for racing lubricants. Used by NHRA Pro Mod champions Jose Gonzalez and Chris Thorne along with their closest competitors, LAT Racing Oil continues to carry top-level racers to the winner's circle in all categories of competition. From engine oil to transmission fluid and gear oil, LAT has you covered from end to end in your race car. A nationwide dealer network needs easy access to our products as well. Visit LATRacingOils.com for more. Hello there, Bandit Racing Week fans. Former broadcaster Marshall Crocker Jr. here, part-time driver of the number 78 for 785 Racing. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about Geezer Authentics, your place for all things Bandit Racing League merchandise. Well, now let's say you want to go and buy a t-shirt for your reigning, defending Bandit Racing League champion, Eddie Haggy. You put it in black, you get it in an extra large, and you add it to your cart there for a reasonable price. You're going to move on, maybe look at some, you know, shirts and sweaters, but maybe there's nothing that catches your eye this time, so you're going to move on to some wall wear. And you know me, I, I can't lie, I was a big Cody Welch fan back in my time broadcasting, so maybe you want to grab a 785 Cody Welch pennant to hang on your wall above your sim racing rig. You add it to your cart, and you're going to move on. Maybe you're thinking some sort of accessory, you know, maybe you're a big hat person like I am, you need something to wrap right on the brim, and... There you go, Bandit Racing League hats in a variety of colors, but I personally like the combo of the camo and that full center racing network orange. And you're gonna move on now to some drinkware. You need something to drink your coffee out of in the morning. Why not grab a 785 racing mug and support yours truly, Marshall Crocker Jr. This has been Geezer Authentics. Check out the site, lots of great options for Bandit Racing League fans. As we are back here right before they go green. As the green flag is in the air, we are back underway here. Smallwood. He's trying to break up this draft as much as he can. That's why he's running down on the bottom, much down the back stretch. He's just trying to. If they do want to draft, they're gonna have to chase him down there. Which that's a good way to find out if they do want to draft is go low, and if they chase you, then they're trying to draft. And not really much you can do at that point. That's one thing that's hard being the leader is you're kind of stuck there. You're like, you know, I don't really know what to do. Now, am I just going to have to run away from everybody, or am I just going to be lucky enough that they start get, start racing each other? You, or a lot of the time, you just want to have them racing each other more than anything else. Wood 
would be just ran a 52.47 for his lap time, so he's doing a pretty fast times at the moment. A little bit loose there. From Callaway, I saw that truck was sideways on him. Smallwood's probably saying, please, just get this to the end. He wants to see that white flag in the air, because they wreck after the white flag, the next flag ends it. Uh, old NASCAR, where if it went to the end, then that was the end of the race. Not in this one. Not in this one anymore. I actually prefer, to be honest with you. He's small. He's going to keep doing this. You're probably looking at him like, why is he doing this? That's breaking the draft. Breaking the draft as much as you can. The only real option that he's got at this point is just try to keep them from getting a run needs to do it. He needs to get good exits though, good, entry, good entries on the corner. If he gets bad uh, entries, it's going to hurt his exit overall. <clears throat> it's drawn ever so closer to him. Not just going to let him run away either if he thinks that. They're going to make it really difficult on him to do anything at the, at the moment. As I thought we had somebody around almost. I think we did have some tires that were screeching. Just that I'm, I may just be hearing stuff too. I could just be going insane at the moment. Who knows? Could be going crazy. Hmm. See that run. Jay can get one. He's got a big run down here too. Probably doing something. Discord a message that was ended up being sent through. Maybe broadcast I did last night. Jay trying to get that car to break and turn. If he can get the break and turn, he's got to lay off on entry and see if he can get it to rotate. Because that's not how he gets rotated there. He's going to have to deal with Hales almost. It'll be very very close between him and Hales right side by side with him. Smallwood's going to be looking out, that, looking out that mirror just a tad now because of all the stuff that's coming from behind. He's going to have to deal with it. You're going to see blocks be thrown now. He might not be smart blocks, but hey, they're, they're going to be blocks. So who, who can say what's wrong and what's right at that moment, pretty much, I'd say. just to get a bite, just one corner to turn for him and get a huge run. This might be the corner. I think he got a good exit on that one. He doesn't have help from Hales, though, is the issue. Look at Winker. Winker, who pitted on his way back up to eighth, and he has those fresher tires. So he can make a little bit more moves that other people probably can't to make it three wide. It really shouldn't be. I'm a big fan for those. Make it three wide. I don't care. Go three wide when you shouldn't be going three wide. That makes it more interesting than interesting than anything else, in my perspective. Winker looks like he'll get two positions there. As Bent won't really fight him on the inside. Can't really mount too much of a challenge either, though, from the positions that he's in. But when does Stinson make his move? I mean, he could very well be planning his move and not showing his hand early. He could be practicing right now, trying to get that run off the corner. He's not going to chase Smallwood down to the bottom. That's a choice that he makes. That's not, And that honestly may not be a very bad one either. Um, I could just, if you go down there and chase him, you're putting yourself out of position 
Is it really worth it? Not really sometimes. But I think if, if he has to do it later, he'll he'll definitely do it later. Stinson getting a bigger run. He needs to... He, only thing I can really see him doing is if he backs up, he has to back up to Hales, and they've got to leave uh, Smallwood out to dry, and then basically one lap, Hales has to get a really good exit and just shove as hard as he can. I don't see him doing, but I'm not counting out Winker now. Winker's coming. He is flying up through here. And there is four laps left. I remember one race. I came from the back with two laps left, and I finished, like, fourth in the open race. That car was absolutely flying. I just you know, I just got involved in a wreck or something. or some, or I decided, hey, I was so far back. I was like, no, let's just take some tires. Or I only got, I had tires left, and I dang near could have probably caught the leader if I didn't have to deal with somebody who almost wrecked in front of me. I had to check up for him. But Winker, three laps left here. He's got the tires. Does he have the time, though, is the question. He'll draw even with Callaway. I got the inside Callaway. If he cuts off crosses, no, that's not a good idea. Winker's going to get in there. He's got to get clear of Callaway basically as fast as he can, and he's not able to do that. He needs to get done this corner. And Winker get clear. He's not going to be able to when he gets loose. And that may kill his chance of catching the leader unless Stinson lays back and gets Hales to shove him. Hales is falling back a little bit more, though. Can Stinson mount a run in time to get to him? Winker's still fighting back there. And I think if you're Stinson, you save it maybe a little bit. I mean, just barely cool the tires down. And then I say throw caution to the wind the last lap. See if you can get that truck to bite on the one corner that you need to. As Lawrence has apparently gone off the track and came back on. He was back in the edge. Now Stinson's going to start chasing him down. He's going to start falling in the tire tracks of Smallwood. Smallwood trying to just slowly run away. Can Stinson get that truck to turn and do what he needs it to? Two tenths. He got a good run that corner. Can he get a good run through two? Can Hales get a good run and get Stinson a bump draft? He won't be able to. Smallwood extends his lead almost to three tenths, but Stinson's going to be coming back just a little bit because of the draft. I think Smallwood, however, has gotten enough of a gap stint, and I don't think he's going to be able to get to him in time. Too little, too late. I just think that truck's a little tight because he's going up the track on the entry. Winker, he won't be able to get third here, I believe. But he definitely made a good move with those tires. I did not expect him to do that. But Isaac Smallwood will come out of four here, and he will win at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Three tenths over Stinson, four tenths over Hales. Austin, I need a Discord invite. Uh. Trying to get a Gonna get a Discord invite here soon, but I'll pull up the race winner stuff here. It's Isaac Smallwood from Hartford, Kentucky. Whoa, somebody's just smoked off their front end. He is gone off that car.
See if he does a burnout here. nose in. He's trying to get turned around here. I don't think he's quite able to. As he will exit his truck there. Uh, don't have a Discord invite, so I can't get into a room to interview anybody is the issue. Uh, I'll give Mark a little bit of time here. I've, there, there we go. Got a Discord invite. Uh, I need to ask him. Can he give me perms real quick? Give me some perms here really quickly. Still waiting on some permed at the moment. Mute Discord just in case something happens. There we go. Now I got perms for it. Okay, we will bring in the third place driver in. Who's third here? Just to make sure. Bill Hales. Hey, Bill, this is Bryson. Who's got a copy, man? Hey, Bryce. What's up, buddy? How are you tonight? And so you come home third, you fall just a little bit short that the, short there at the end. But you know, how did the race go for you overall, though? Because it seems like you worked your way up front there towards the end. You had a legit shot for the win. It just seems like it's so hard to pass on this track. Yeah, if you if you don't get somebody passed on the restarts, if you don't get to their outside, you're kind of stuck. Um, those last few laps, I thought I was going to be able to push the uh, the 98, 
we got one good run and he got a little tight. We had to check up and we were kind of through after that. If you just can't get to somebody's outside, it's hard to pass here. And so how did the race go for you overall though? Oh, I had a good race. Um, you know, just trying to save that right front tire. Um, I stayed in the top 10 most of the night, got cycled back a little bit. Um, midway through the race, but we worked our way back up. But yeah, so you just didn't want to get caught down on that inside. and Just wanted to get like a top five tonight and getting points. So it's a good night for us. You know, so how much were, like how much did tires matter? Because I am i wasn't able to really tell. Did they matter a lot here or is it kind of just eh? No, they matter. After about five or six laps, they matter. You saw um, the 42, he come from the back of the field to the front with uh, nine laps on a new set of tires. So they mattered a great deal. Um, you could just basically almost hold it flow, uh, you know, full out going through the corners on new tires. And then after about eight or nine laps, you had to back up the corner to save that right front. Um, they got super tight, especially if you're directly behind somebody, try to keep that left front out from, out from behind someone. But yeah, after eight or nine laps, man, it was extremely hard to pass. All right, man. Well, before I let you go, is there anybody you want to thank? Any sponsors you want to shout out that may have been watching the stream here tonight? Yeah, man. Just shout out what you guys do with uh, Ghost Network and uh, AOR. It's a great league. And, you know, the wife, our companies are on the car, Melanie House Photography and M&H Construction. So it's a good night. All right, man. Well, I will let you go, but good job tonight, man. Thank you, buddy. Have a good night, man. Bill Hales, the third place driver. We will bring in the second place driver, Jay Stinson. Hey, Jay, this is Bryson Booth. Got a copy, man? Hey, what's going on, Bryce? How you doing, man? Man, so you fall just a little bit short there at the end. You know, what was going through, through your head those closing laps, knowing that you had a shot, but you you just couldn't get to them? Ah, it's so hard to pass here, man. The the main thing going through my head is, A, hey, don't don't wreck myself. Uh, hold the car straight, and if he gives you an inch, take a mile. Uh, but he didn't, and I couldn't catch him. So uh, it was a fun race. Uh, I left for a little while, but... He's fast, man. I just couldn't find a way around him and uh, safely get around him without wrecking me or him or people behind me. So just got a little loose, um, and then it got a little tight, and I just I couldn't make anything happen. So and so, how was hard insane. was yeah? So how hard was it to pass at this track? Because it seemed like it was just ridiculously hard. You just uh, you couldn't pass low. Um, if you could, if you could somehow get on top and be uh, be above the guy, you can make a move or two happen. But if you try to get underneath somebody, the only way you're doing is if you uh, wreck them, move them, or do something you probably shouldn't do to get around them. So the the hot side was king tonight. And so how much of a factor were tires here at this track? Because I wasn't able to really tell, but it seemed like uh, when I talked to Bill, they mattered a lot. So how much did they matter here? Oh, they, they were everything. Um, I think if five more laps, I think Winker, who was able to grab a set in that last caution we had, because he probably was the only one that had a set. I think five more laps, he, he really makes a run at the at the lead. He, he would have to do it on the low side against us because we wouldn't give him the high, but he had really fresh tires and may have made a run. So it, it's, it was all the tires. So the fresher the tires you had, the better you ran. Clean air also. And well, before I let you go, is there anybody you want to thank? Any sponsors you want to shout out that may have been watching the stream here tonight? Yeah, absolutely, man. I got uh, Rhino Linings of Bristol jumped on the truck uh, this year, so I appreciate those guys and everything they do. Uh, my teammates at White Knuckle Racing, um, we had a couple, uh, well, uh, Dylan wasn't able to show, but Colton and Clinton running in Discord, we had a we had a fun time. Uh, it was a good time racing with those guys, and uh, we're getting a couple of top ten. Colton had a little bit of bad luck there at the end, so uh, we'll try to rebound and get that headed out in the right direction next week. Uh, just want to thank you for broadcasting. I know um, Austin couldn't be here, so we appreciate you for filling in and allowing us to go back and watch this stuff. We appreciate you guys doing that at Ghost. All right, man. Well, I'll let you go. Good job coming home second tonight, man. I appreciate you, Price. You have a good one, man. That was the second place driver, Jay Stinson. We will bring in the race winner in Isaiah, or Isaac Smallwood. Hey, Isaac, this is Bryce in the booth. Have a copy, man. What's up, buddy? Man, so you come up with the win there. Now, how nervous were you those closing laps, knowing that pretty much if you're the leader, you're kind of almost a sitting duck at certain points? Yeah, I just kind of had to manipulate the air a little bit. And I know they're towards the end of that run there. I was starting to get a little tight. So I was just trying to hold on and stay out front, try to keep them in dirty air. And just hopefully the caution didn't come out because I know uh, Winker, he had fresher tires than us. And if we had a caution, he probably would have got us. You know, so how did the race go for you overall, though, in your words? 
Um, so there, the, the, I just, I had just bought this track like 15 minutes before I loaded in and, uh, I used the first couple of runs as a test, just a little bit of, as a test. Cause I know single car, I was, I was not good. So, uh, I was just kind of using that as a test there. And I just, from there, I, uh, started, uh, making, making moves and started, uh, 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 it, it just it was a crazy race. I know some places um, there's cars slow on the track and make making all kinds of moves, cars spinning out and everything. It's just a it was a crazy race, and I was just glad to pick up a W. Yeah. So, how much did the tires mean here at this track? And were you nervous with Winker knowing that he had that he had fresh tires? Oh, for sure. If that caution comes out there at the the last caution comes out there five laps sooner. He hundred percent he passes us because uh, we would have I think he would have had like or if that caution came out ten laps later he would have had like ten fifteen lap pressure tires and he would have just passed us all like setting ducks. Yeah, all right, man. Well, before I let you go, is there anybody you want to thank? Any sponsors you want to shout out? Maybe I'm watching the stream here tonight. Yeah, I just. My teammates, uh, they've been a little MIA. Hope, hopefully, they're they're getting everything figured out and everything. So, uh, my teammates, uh, everybody that supports me, you and Austin do the that you uh, put this stream on, and Mark and all of them that put the lead together, and just everybody in a collective effort, you know, who supports me and puts this stuff on. Um, just pretty much everybody that does all this. All right, man. Well, I will let you go, but good job coming home with the win, man. Yep. That was the race winner in Isaac Smallwood. I will go over the finishing order here now. Isaac Smallwood first, second, Jay Stinson third. Bill Hales fourth, Kevin Winker fifth, Jesse Callaway sixth, Mark Beverly seventh, Clint Woodby eighth, Brody Bent ninth, Joe Yakes tenth, Michael Newman eleventh, Evan Schilling twelfth, Dennis Steele thirteenth, Jesse Wise fourteenth, uh, Rick LePage, 15th, Robert Dudley, 16th, Haas Beverly, 17th, John, I want to butcher his last name, 18th, Colton Hardy, 19th, Jonathan Herbert, 20th, Nicholas Lawrence, 21st, Tyler Beverly, 22nd, Andrew Hansley, 23rd is Dylan Foss. But I'm not going to keep you any longer, so I will let you all go.